Hi and welcome back. In this module we will look at snapshot management. Before we check the topics, I would like to point out that it is important that you only create necessary snapshots. Initially, snapshots will not take any space, but they will definitely take space eventually. So if you have no need for certain snapshots, you should also not create them, either automatically or manually. Very often snapshots are scheduled with a certain purpose, but when strategies or tools change, most often people forget that there is a snapshot schedule. So the creation of snapshots will simply continue even though these snapshots serve no purpose whatsoever. So you should stop them. Now what we will do in this module, we will have a look at the different ways to create snapshots, manually and scheduled. We'll restore an entire volume from a snapshot. Then we will restore a single file. And we will also restore a file to a different name and then check whether that will take any additional space. And it's also possible to restore a file partially. This is not very common, but it is possible and we will have a look at it. And finally, we will see what happens if clients restore files from the snapshot to the active file system. Now, how can we create snapshots? The first command shows an example of a manual snapshot creation. We've already done that in the previous module. So you run snapshot create, then enter the volume name and the vServer, or the storage virtual machine, I should say, and a snapshot name. That will create a snapshot with the name snap1, in this case, in the dot snapshot directory of the volume. We can also create a snapshot policy that we then connect to a volume that we want to snapshot on a scheduled basis. We'll have a look at creating a snapshot policy in a second. After having created a policy, you will connect that policy to the volume like you see in this slide. So you run vol modify and then enter the volume name and storage virtual machine name. Then you connect, in this case, my poll to the volume. Also in the policy, we have to enter an existing schedule and retention policy. This retention policy determines how many snapshots you want to keep. Now let's see what such a policy could look like. So this is what we'll do. We will first create a cron schedule called new shed to run 10 minutes past the hour. So every hour of every day of every month in the year we will run it 10 minutes past the hour. Then we'll create a snapshot policy with the following properties. We use the new schedule, new sched, uh, we enable it, and we are going to keep two snapshots. Then after that we will connect the policy to the volume. So we first create the schedule, we call it new shed, and the day of the week is every day, every day of the month, and every 10 minutes past the hour. Every month of the year, and the hour also is every hour of the day. After we've done that, we create the policy and we are going to specify that it's for SVM Red. Policy is called New Policy. Schedule 1 is the new shed and enabled is true and count 1 is 2. You can have multiple schedules and multiple counts in the different rules that you can hold in a snapshot policy, which means that you can create tiered snapshotting. So, for example, you could create a second rule with a second schedule and a second count that would only be run once a day, so say at, at midnight. And if you would set the count to five, then you would have five daily snapshots and two hourly snapshots. We are just going to stick to one rule in this snapshot policy. And then we are going to connect this new snapshot policy to volume vol underscore x of the SVM Red storage virtual machine, and then we'll be done. So it's going to get new poll, and it warns us that now you connect a new policy to this volume, all the snapshots that were created by a previous policy will not be removed. And from now on, only the new policy will be in function. So once we've done that, we can run vol show and look at the snapshot policy that's connected to the volume in SVM Red, and it's the new policy that is connected to vol underscore x in the storage virtual machine SVM Red. And we're done. Now let's first have a theoretical look at restores. What I will discuss is what happens if you restore a volume or a single file or a partial file. 
We can do that with the snap restore and snap restore file functionalities. This is a licensed feature. Then we'll have a look at what happens if a client restores a file from the snapshot directory into the active file system. Now to restore from a snapshot from the cluster shell, you could state that this is always done in the following order. First there will be files in the active file system, then there should be one or more snapshots, and then you can restore from the snapshot into the active file system, or a client can copy files from the .snapshot directory into the active file system. Restoring a full snapshot is not something that you will regularly do because that would set the entire volume back to an earlier state. Use cases would be that there is a virus and you want to reset the entire volume to a previous state before the virus was discovered or that you have run a major change in the environment and that you uh, regret that so or the change has failed so you want to reset the situation to a previous state. So imagine you've got snap1 up to and including snap5 and let's say the name also determines the order in which the snapshots were created. So snap1 is the oldest and snap5 is the newest. If you would restore snap2 then you will reset the volume to the state it was in when snap2 was created. This means that snap3, 4 and 5 were not there at the time. So you will lose snap3, 4 and 5. Also, restoring a snapshot like this will reset all files in the volume to a previous state. It's important to note that restoring a snapshot does not copy blocks into the file system. It only restores the root inode. So you will change the tree of pointers because the root inode is restored. Restoring a single file means that you select a file from a snapshot and restore it into the active file system using the cluster shell. This will reset the pointers in the active file system. And after the restore, the pointers in that file system will point to the same blocks as the snapshot pointers. You can also restore a file partially. This means that you can take any number of 4K blocks from the file in the snapshot and reset the pointers in the active file system. The restored pointers will point to the same blocks as the snapshot blocks in the snapshot. If a client restores a file via the dot .snapshot in an NFS mounted volume or a SIF share, then the file as a whole will be restored to the active file system by copying it or using previous versions. This will also create new blocks in the file system and thus take space. Now I'm going to run four demos, one demo on each of these discussed topics. And with every demo I will tell you what I'm going to do. So you can follow the flow of all these actions.